Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 53. Yes, 53. So as of last night, I brought this up, um, had I my original intentions, like probably a, a, maybe a year before I even decided to do this, I thought about doing it every week. I figured, okay, well, I could do it every week, and you know uh, the way I do the vlogs, um, and 53 would have been well, 52 would have been 52 weeks would have been one one year's worth of work. So I was able to knock out basically 52 um, one year's worth of uh, podcast. Had I done it, had I had I been doing it a week as a weekly uh, uh, podcast, I would have been uh, completed with a year. So, but um, I'm glad I'm doing it daily. Um, uh, again, like I like I mentioned, like way in the beginning, I I'm, I set it up so it's actually really easy for me to. I didn't want anything complicated. Though I have like massive microphones here, I don't use them. Um, I kind of keep my system as as simple as simple as possible. Quick uploads and like nothing fancy. Everything's pretty, uh, you know, straight to the point. You know, so um, and and it works. I'm enjoying it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting a little better, a little more comfortable. I don't worry too much about what I'm going to talk about. Um, I, I usually figure that out. Like like right now, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about, so I'm gonna I'm figuring it out right now. Um, but uh, I'm getting an alert here. Hold on one second. We have an Amber alert for Chai Liam Brown Erickson, six months old. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, most likely, it's probably a family member, but it's so sad. I hate to I hate to see stuff like that, but it's life, it's reality, and it's scary as hell, especially when we have little ones in our lives, even older ones, you know? Um, I have a, a teenage daughter in Germany, you know? How much can I watch her? I can't watch her at all, you know? I have to pray that she's smart enough to, to you know, really, really keep her eyes, not even smart enough, just, you know, just pray that she doesn't, she's never put into a situation, you know, um, but yeah, she's in the army, uh, she's been in Germany now, it's funny, because she turned 18 in basic training, that was in Oklahoma, and then she turned 19 in Germany, so she tends to like it, um, and one of the highlights for her is, and it's a little scary for me, is they could drink at 16 years old, and, uh, you know, she doesn't, she sort of admits it. She t- t- kind of kind of makes it seem as though, uh, yeah, it's kind of cool, you know. You can drink at sixteen here. I'm like, okay, so are you drinking? Nah, you know, I'm not really a drinker. I'm like, okay, you know, I, I, I don't attack her because I don't want her cutting me off. She's too far, and I need to be able to get in touch with her. So I just pray that she's uh, she's making the best decisions possible, and uh, she's pretty smart. She's pretty smart. She's been around some craziness so she knows she knows she knows what's up so i just pray for that you know you know speaking of these uh these young girls i'm watching something that has been out for a while but i never i never watched it never really got a chance to watch it i'm not really too much into the dark stuff when um sometimes i am you know like when i'm in the hotels i have this thing like the the one show that pick that kicks in a lot when we're on the road is uh, like um, 48 hours or forensic files like that. And I might watch those and they're, they're dark, but it's like, that's what I watch when I'm on the road. When I'm home, I don't watch them. Uh, a little too dark for me. You know, I lived a crazy life and, you know, I, I've just been around it. So, you know, it's not, it's, it's not a, it's not entertaining to me at all. You know, it's actually could be uh, kind of depressing. Um, but anyway, uh, we started watching Surviving R. Kelly. A lot of you guys probably seen that already. And, man, so crazy. You know, 
when it comes to these celebrities and the power they have, listen, he's an absolute genius. Always loved his work. And when, you know, and then you tend to, you know, because of his status, you could, you try not to, to believe it. And that's that's anybody. You know, you try not to believe it. People can bullshit themselves and say, yeah, but, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to believe. And then you start getting people who start coming forward and they start telling you the stories. And, of course, all those people, you start to kind of, you kind of scrutinize a bit, you know, because you're not sure because people, unfortunately, do things for money. They really do. They'll do some really low, down, dirty shit for money. Now, take take the the, Jack, the Michael Jackson situation, you know. I mean, the, the guy's dead, so I don't think anyone should be talking on his case anymore. That's it. Um, I don't. I don't indulge in it. I'm talking to you guys. Um, and it's not a conversation. I'm talking to you. So it's not a debate or whatever the case may be. But if he was guilty, if he was guilty, and it's hard to say he's guilty because this is the thing. we supposed to rely, we're supposed to have faith in the judicial system, the court system, the law. We're supposed to have this faith. So now, if the faith, if this, if this law that we're supposed to be faithful for says he's not guilty and they let him go, then what do we do? Why do we then go against it? Why do we go against it? Had the law said we, what we want them to say, yeah, he's guilty, then we would be like, yeah, the law was right. It was all about the law said. The jurist said he was found guilty. Da, 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 da. People will fight that to the end. But if he was found not guilty, people don't want to fight it. But he was found not guilty. You know, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. And then you think, so people do shit for money. They do some... People sell not only their own asses, they, they sell their kids, man. People kill, sell their kids, whether it's for greed, for money, for drugs, whatever the case may be, you know? You, you look at some of these parents in the Michael Jackson case, you're like, yeah, well, yeah, you know, my son was six and he he slept over. He was 12 and he slept over Michael Jackson's house. You know, and I know they were sleeping in the same bed and watching cartoons. What? What? I think the parents should be thrown in jail right along with him if he had to go to jail. In fact, the parents should have went to jail first. Okay, listen, if there's a lion cage and you're standing outside with the lion, okay, and you pick up your child, you throw your child into the lion's den and that lion kills your child, then I think you need to be killed also. If they're going to kill that lion and that, you need to be killed also because you threw that baby into the lion's den. Okay, so if these people are allowing their kids to go and sleep for were sleeping at Michael Jackson's house, then that's basically the same as you throwing the baby in the lion's desk, in the lion's den. I believe that you need to be freaking arrested and you need to be put in prison right along with him and maybe doing the same exact time, okay? Because you know what? These children are, we, we are, they are entrusted to us. They are entrusted to us. It is our responsibility to take care of these children. And not just our own, but others as well. Those people seeing other kids going through shit and keeping quiet, that's, that's no way. No way. Listen, I don't care if you're my best friend. I see something I don't like. I'm, I'm, I'm turning your ass in when it comes to children. So it's it's just it's just crazy. Now, now I'm watching this thing with... Um, with um, R. Kelly, surviving R. Kelly, and man, you know, I can understand the power, I can understand the power, you know, he's having the same impact as some of these little kids were having on Michael Jackson from back in the days, this was like the modern day, you know, and a lot of these parents, I'm sorry, they, they knew what was up, they knew what was up. You know, and, you know, he had the ability and he had the time to get into the heads. And they said it was like a cult. 
You know, they they couldn't. Um, if you guys have a chance, it's on Netflix. Check it out. It's called Surviving R. Kelly. Check it out. Um, it's really a sad situation, you know. Um, but he would have these girls in rooms all by themselves all day by themselves. They couldn't use the bathroom without asking permission. They couldn't eat without asking permission. If someone else spoke to them, they wouldn't to don't, totally ignore and not to answer. Um, man, he had this one girl that he he basically, you know, had her look like a boy. Put a, a cap on her, cut her hair. She had tattoos. She looked like a dude, you know. And it's like, wow, this is crazy. You know, and then, the, then the, the, the system finds him not guilty on that first time. So what do you do? What do you do at that point? You're like, okay, well, what do you do? <laughs> you know? And it's crazy, man, this, this power. Look at Bill Cosby. Okay, yeah, he's doing it to grown women. And probably a lot of them were down with it, whatever the case may be. I don't know. See, that's the whole problem is there are those that are innocent and then there are those that are guilty. There are those that were really, really victims. And then there are those that went along with it. But they're just crying victim now, you know. But, you know, it's these celebrities, man, that have this, this, this God complex. Like they can do whatever the hell they want. And they, they'll beat the system each and every time. It's crazy, you know. And it's scary, it's scary, especially when we have like when we have daughters, or even sons, man, for that matter. But you know, we have daughters. No? Little girls, man. Little girls are very easily influenced, man. They can be you know, it's it's easy. You know, you look at you look at a celebrity like an R. Kelly and you look at him as though he's flawless, he's immortal. I'm writing in my book, I'm reading I'm writing a story that basically talks about that part of the business of, you know, you know what the label is looking for. What what's what is expected of an artist? An artist is supposed to seem like they're immortal, like they're flawless. You know, uh, you know, women want to you know be with them, and guys want to be like them. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. You know, but um, you know, you see the stories. You see all the women now stepping forward now. They were young, man, 14, 15, 16. You know, and then the legal age was 17, is 17. I don't know if that's everywhere, but Chicago, that's where he's from, it's 17. But he wouldn't even wait till 17. He was grabbing these girls at, you know, 16, 15, 14 years old. It's like, man, you know, everything came out about the whole Aaliyah thing, you know. Yeah, that he did. He, he married Aaliyah. He had, they had documents forged. That said that she was of age. Either that she was of age or that she got consent. I forgot what the what it was about. And that she um and that apparently they got they got married because she got pregnant. You know? And it, it was it was it was crazy. It was crazy. It's like, man, you know, it's like you're a superstar. You can have whoever you want. Did he do this to basically prove that he could do whatever the hell he want and he wants and get to get away with it? I don't know. I don't know. It's just it's just sad, especially when it comes to the, you know, the industry, man. When it comes to the industry, it's like, man, we got such incredible talents that I'm fortunate. I'm so blessed to have been able to experience in my lifetime. I'm talking about the Michael Jacksons and the R. Kellys and, you know, the superstars, the Michael Jordans, the Kobe Bryants, all, you know, all these people that, um, that were these... In Robin Williams, these people that were these incredible, incredible artists, and you know, we we they grew up in in during our lifetime, so we shared a lifetime. If we had anything in common, it was a lifetime we shared, you know. And there's gonna be a time when I'm dead, they're gonna be dead. Some of them died already. Some of them will be dying tomorrow. I might die tomorrow. Who knows, you know? But you know, when you you look at artists. You look at, you look at them almost with this kind of immortal. You know, like they're immortal. You know, you look at Bill Cosby. Now, Bill Cosby, I liked the in the Cosby show. I actually 
when that show was hot, I was incarcerated. So that was like, that's the channel that does not get touched. So we would go in the day room whenever that show came on. I forgot. I forgot where we were at. Was it every, uh, yeah, once a week. And we were going there. And, you know, he was like the ideal father. Now, remember, we didn't have Latino fathers growing up. I don't remember them on TV. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm overlooking somebody. One of you guys might come up with one. But we didn't have it. So the closest we had was like a Cosby. And even him, he was beyond our status because him he was a doctor. His wife was a lawyer, right? And, and you know, we didn't live like that. I didn't live in a big, beautiful house like that. <laughs> I didn't have all the cool stuff that they had growing up. You know, I lived in an apartment with a, a single mother. We didn't even have a car, you know, stairs. I didn't have stairs that went up to my room. I had stairs that went up to my apartment. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so you look at this, you know, um, I started to kind of lose my thing for Cosby when he started, you know, downing a lot of people, you know, you know, talking about uh, other artists and comedians. And it's like, listen, man. If you're an artist, you're an artist. As an artist, you might be a comedian. You might, you might do these incredible clean jokes. Clean. Anybody can listen to. And you're, you're, you're great at it. And then you might be the Eddie Murphy or the Richard Pryor. Well, who else do we have now? <laughs> Who's out there? Robert, uh, Kevin Hart isn't that bad. Uh, Chappelle? Mm. There's a few others that are they're pretty raunchy. But shoot, I'm down, man. I like them. I like them all if they're good. Whether you could be clean or you could be absolutely dirty. You could be politically incorrect. You can be, as a comedian, you could be racist. None of that stuff bothers me. <clears throat> you know, because I understand the art. Other people, of course, can't. They can't deal with it. You know? Um, same thing with, you know, actors. The same thing with singers. I, I have a... Uh, yeah, I just love the arts. Dancers. Uh... Painters, I'm fascinated by painters. I'm fascinated by the mind of a painter's authors, writers, you know. Um, and then when Bill Cosby, now, I don't know, I have to Google this, okay? I could be wrong, but this is what I heard. I heard that he bought all the rights to the Little Rascals. And because of Stymie and Buckwheat and the way they were being portrayed... He took these, um, he took these films, and I don't know what he did with them. Did he destroy them? Did he put them in a safe? I don't know what he did, but this is what I heard. I heard that he got them out. That he was, he thought that that was, you know, a bad look, you know, um, for the young young black actors. And I totally disagree. Sorry. If anybody, you know, when I saw Stymie and I saw Buckwheat, they were playing with the white kids. That's it. What, the way they were dressed was Stymie? Uh, uh, freaking Spanky wasn't dressed cool. <laughs> he, he looked funny, too. They all looked funny. That's, they just looked, oh, oh, because Buckwheat's hair was all, all messed up. He had kinky hair. What, it was, what are you going to do, have a fade? You know, it, it's crazy, you know, and... But if anything, you know, this was, these kids were stars, man. And you're going to go, you think you're doing something, you think you're so fucking smart, you're going to go now and you're going to take these films. How do you know that these actors want you to do that? You know, they want to be, they want a legacy. You know, that's the thing. He took their legacy. You know, so, so because of him, my children, my grandchildren will never know who Stymie was. We'll never know who Buckwheat was. Why not? Why not? They were part of my childhood, too. I watched them. I love watching them. They were my favorite. All right, so what the way they talk? Ah, whatever, man. Now, that was, that's how they did shit back then. That's just the way they did. Hey, I don't see no Puerto Rican kids playing up in there. I didn't see that. I'm not insulted. I'm like, well, they ain't come from Puerto Rico yet. <laughs> they were still in Puerto Rico. What am I going to say? You know? But I'm sure Stymie and, and, and Buckwheat, and uh, I'm sure that they wish that, you know, their kids and grandkids and great-grandkids and great-great-grandkids could enjoy their legacy and enjoy their performances because that's what they were doing. They were performing. So, you know, he, he got me sick with that crap, you know? And when he did that, I kind of, I lost all respect 
for him. If anybody, you know, disagrees with me, oh well, whatever. You know, it's my opinion, whatever. I just thought it was stupid. I just thought it was stupid. You know, now he went and took that legacy. Now look at his legacy. Okay? He's trying to be all moral. He's trying to be morally correct. Get the fuck out of here. Dumbass. Whatever. <laughs> you know? Anyway, so. But anyway, uh, when you guys get a chance, man, check out that um, check out that show, Surviving R. Kelly. It's actually pretty interesting. I'm going to go back in. I just ate dinner. I'm a, it's, a, it's a chilling uh, weekend. Next weekend, I'm gone, so... I've been chilling this weekend, really chilling. Like, we don't even want to go out. We're just kind of kicking back. I got a big 70-inch uh, screen TV. I sit back and, and just, just that's what we do. Call us old. I don't know, but, you know, next weekend we'll be gone for, you know, three, four days, whatever the case may be. Um, anyway. All right, guys. So, listen, uh, I'm going to let you go. It's Saturday night. Um, once again, this is episode 53. I appreciate you checking in i appreciate you listening in uh please make sure you subscribe if you can share these man that's cool that's cool if you can share these i would really appreciate that especially if um if you're sharing the youtube the youtube versions that would be cool too i would appreciate that um uh definitely like them uh i, I watch i could tell that i can see the ratio of the amount of people that listen um, and the amount of people that like, so definitely, you know, get those likes up for me, please, it's very simple, just click, you know, until tomorrow, good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat, for if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.